Hello there! In this lesson, we'll be painting this giant realistic rose with oil paints. So let's get into it. I'm using a 900 by 1200 centimetre canvas for this project. This is the outline that you can download from the link above or our website. We can then transfer the line work with a graphite pencil. The core of this rose is quite detailed, so I just rough in some shadow to remind me where to lay on tone in the next stage. So the rose is marked up on the canvas. The next stage is to seal in that drawing and the canvas, and for that we're going to use acrylic paint. And I'll be using sienna, burnt sienna and raw umber, as well as sealing in the drawing. This ground also provides tone to areas not covered with the underpainting and warms up any hue placed on top. In the old days, they would have obviously tinted the canvas with an oil-based ground, but using an acrylic has the benefit that you don't have to wait for it to dry and you can start the painting pretty much straight away. I then pour out some thickened linseed oil medium to create tones for the grisé. A grisé is an underpainting of grey values. I lay out some titanium white and darken it with additions of Mars Black, so I have eight steps, moving up in contrast, with step one, titanium being the lightest, and step eight being pure Mars Black, obviously with six steps in between. So we've got our paints and our mediums laid out, and we can start doing the tonal underpainting. Now when doing a tonal underpainting, you need to move around the canvas, lightening and darkening as you go. So you need some kind of hand support so you don't get paint on the back of your hand and end up transferring it. So paint supports can be a mild stick or a support rod. And I particularly like this because it sits under the canvas holding knob and gives you support like this. And it's very easy to use. For brushes, I'm using the Professional Series Oil Brushes. You can find this excellent reference shot in the lesson plan PDF that can be downloaded from our website or in the information link above. The basic procedure or system is to lay all of the basic tones adjoining one another and then blend them so the transitions are smooth. In this first stage, I'll be laying in the dark tones first, followed by the lighter tones, and try to keep the coats as thin as possible, as it's easier to get smooth transitions with thin coats of paint. Mars Black is very different from Ivory Black, as when mixed with Titanium White, the resulting amalgamation of tones gives a warmer grey to the mix. With Ivory and Titanium, the mix is slightly blue and much cooler. The difference is very apparent when you are painting with it, and Mars Black suits the grisé for our rose much better. When you look at the reference image, make sure you understand all of the folds and how each petal relates to the one it's next to. Remember that petals exhibit different forms. Some flip, some ruffle, and others curve in graceful rolls. Tackle each petal as its own entity, and don't move on to the next petal until you have finished the previous one. That way you won't get overwhelmed. Building it all up like this requires some patience, but it's all worth it when you see your rose come to life. Notice how the light source affects each petal. In this photo, our rose is being front lit, so any area of the petal at a parallel angle to the light will be in full highlight. Understand there will be reflected light that will need to be subtly suggested too. I often talk to people who have recently taken up oils or crossed over from another medium and the resounding opinion is that they have fallen in love with them. The control you have with them is really empowering and the slow drying makes the process of painting more relaxing. Of course you can't bang out a painting and hang it on the wall in an hour, but the disadvantages of slow drying are well worth it when you take into account what you can do with them. Obviously this movie is sped up, but I think it's a clearer way to see the process really. As we move out to the outer petals, they are opened out more and receive more light than the tightly packed core in the centre of the flower. So they are much lighter. In this case, it's better to lay in the white first and lay the Mars Black into the white. Obviously, Mars Black has great tinting power, so take care to add the black sparsely. I like to charge the brush and wipe the excess off onto a rag and darken the appropriate areas slowly. If you do make an area too dark, you can scrape the colour off the offending area with a palette knife and start over. 
This is another wonderful attribute that oil paints possess. They make refinement really easy. Once you have the tones laid on, you can use a clean, dry 50mm Taclon brush to smooth out all the tones. This is a really fantastic technique and it's like magic how it smooths it all out. The trick is to move the brush quickly and just lightly skim the surface. Try to follow the form of each petal with your brush strokes as well. I should also mention when doing a large work it's essential to continually keep moving back to view the painting at a distance. It's the best way to see if things look right. So the grisé of the rose is done and I squeeze out some Mars Black and pour out some more thickened linseed oil medium. I then lay a thin coat into the background. I cut around each petal and dip the brush into the medium before I charge the brush with paint. This makes the paint flow easier so a sharp edge can be created against the petals and it also thins the black so some of the warmth from the under tint shows through creating more interest due to a complex tone. The rose has been left to dry over the weekend and it's still a bit too green to accept any glazes but it's dry enough to place on some detail in the way of water droplets. I like to mark where I'm going to place my water droplets with a water based marker. I then take some paint from Paint Swatch 3 and draw in the perimeter of the droplet. I lay more into the front of the droplet and lay some into the rear behind the droplet to suggest a shadow. I lay titanium into the rear of the droplet and then darken the front. I then blend the tones so the transition from dark to light is smooth. I lay in some white into the shadow as some of the light travels through the droplet and pop a highlight in on the front. Water droplets in shadow obviously reflect this shadow and appear much darker. There is still some reflected light appearing on the surface of the droplet so we need to establish a light tone first and blend the dark tone into this. The tricky thing about macro painting is a lot of the elements like these droplets don't look like they are supposed to when you are so close to the canvas painting them. This rose is depicted about 20 times larger than a real rose. So again you have to stand back and observe what changes need to be made and then add in the information. Here we have a droplet not in shadow but not in highlight either. So it is handled differently again. It is reflecting light and acting as a mirror, so some of the petals might appear in its surface. Putting in the time to create little details like this adds much to a work. So really all of the hard work has been done. But now we have to give our rose some life. And we can do that with subtle glazes. So I squeeze out some yellow and red ochre, ultramarine and sap green. I reduce the colour with the thickened linseed medium and thinly lay it over the petals with a soft Taclon brush. Refer to the photo and it's pretty easy to work out what tone goes where. The basic rule is to lay more pigment onto the dark tones and thin out the glaze over the lighter parts of each petal. Incidentally, you could glaze any colour over this grisaille and it would take on a rich, beautiful tone. But in this exercise, I'd like to explore the subtle reflected tones you see on a white flower. So the coats have to be kept very thin with just a hint of colour. Again work in stages and when the area has received its glaze, relay white into the appropriate parts of each petal. Adding a glaze not only adds a beautiful colour to the work, 
it also gives the work a depth that is impossible to achieve any other way. Glazes work because the light travels through the glaze and is reflected back from the opaque layer below. Remember, areas in highlight will still have less colour and remember to re-add white back into any water droplets. Mm -hmm.